We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. And I don't mind. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with me. In May 2004, Tarua TV went on air for the first time, broadcasting from a transmitter on the hill which overlooks the Tui Brewery at Mangatanoka. Beginning with live simulcasts of other channels and the odd local short film or rugby game, a committed team of local volunteers increased both the number and quality of local shows to where TTV became a true, fully-fledged regional TV station. The time came to take the next step forward. The trustees felt to fulfil the vision of covering the Tarua district um, uh, with Tarua television. And as a radio ham, I knew the only way we could do it uh, was, f was from Warty. I got involved when um, the transmitter was being tra transferred from in town up onto the hill above the brewery. And a short time after that, we got advice from somewhere which said that the channel 42 on Warty was available for grabs. And uh, so we did a little bit of investigation about it and found out that they really wanted to give it to us. So we hummed and hard about that, and uh, at a certain meeting I decided, I said to the chaps, well, why don't we just get this licence and see what happens? The licence proved not only ideal to fulfil the team's vision to cover the Tararua region fully, it also had the added bonus of bringing Tararua TV to the wider Manawatu area. As the team began working out the logistics of the project, Hart Udi quietly began to investigate the Warrity site. Each time I got drawn to a certain bit of land which was before Warrity, uh, even thinking that was dock land, uh, but that, that appealed to me. It just, in fact, uh, on one occasion when I was up there, I had a, uh, one of those orange aerosol sprays for uh, marking things for safety's sake, you know, or when you're doing machinery or going along the road, you know, you put a marker on each side so people can see it. And uh, I put a cross there and sort of claimed it for Jesus. <laughs> Obtaining permission to use that land was initially a drawn-out process, as Hart negotiated with the Department of Conservation, whom he believed owned the land. Struggling with the complications one night, Hart felt divinely prompted to make a phone call to someone completely different. I was talking with Shirley Begley, and I was surprised to find that she was a supporter of Tarua Television, uh, but now living in Palmerston North. But, and she said, I own land up at Warrity, and we talked about the piece of land that I was attracted to or felt drawn to to, to, to be the site for our tower. And uh, lo and behold, after 10 minutes on the phone, I was convinced that this was a very piece of land and that it was privately owned and she was a supporter and assured me that uh, we would ultimately be able to have a, uh, a lease agreement which uh, turned out it was at no cost to Tarot Television. The land question settled, the next phase of the project was to design and construct a suitable mast for the transmitter. During the time of that, uh, Hart wanted to put up a power pole and just stick it on top of that and my vision was that that was not going to be satisfactory because um, in the future there are other things that are going to happen and we already had uh, the background that some people would like to put other forms of transmission from our location up there and to do that satisfactory a power pole was just not going to cut the mustard. I was well aware that putting a pile on up was um a big job. I'd probably liken it to building a house, almost as much work with the foundations and putting everything together. Deciding to use a power pylon was one thing, but purchasing a suitable model turned into an adventure of its own. 
Eventually, the team discovered that Transpower had a number of pylons stored at Fern Hill that had been taken down from the original line that ran through the Warrity area. It was here that Hart's negotiating skills came into play again. Uh, at the end, after about six or seven phone calls, I thought, well, it's going to be now or never. <coughs> I said, well, what would it take to, to give us a tower? And he said, well, Hart, I'd love to give you a tower, but I can't give you to but make me an offer. <laughs> make me an offer. So... Um, I made him an offer which was uh, within our, yeah, well, we could well afford, uh, well, even, even personally, you know. And uh, he said, OK, it's yours. And when we got there, we had carte blanche of which one we selected, and Hart selected the one that was in the middle of the paddock on its own, and that turned out to be um, a, what they call a heavy tower, which means the steel's heavier, and it turned out to be taller than the one that we were originally working with, because originally we had parts of one that was knocked down from up there, which was already kept local, if a local farmer had picked it up and um, used bits and pieces of it. And there was so much of that missing that it was not really a runner. So that's why we had to go and get the other one. And we got this other one, which is six metres taller and considerably stronger. And considering we're up in the snow region, we get snow up there probably once or twice a year. Uh, that um, really was good. Hart had another magic moment, finding the steel to match his design, connecting the transmitter to the mast. I gave the, the, these drawings to uh, Trevor Jackson, uh, or Jackson's Enterprises, and I thought, well, it would be the only place in Pai Tour that might have this bit of steel. And uh, so I, I, I said, well, look, this is what we need. If you guys can help us, we'd be very, very thankful. Um, so I just left it with him, and uh, he said he'd get back to me. And uh, when I got home, which is only a block and a half away, probably five minutes, um, my wife said, oh, have you got something ordered at Jackson's? They just got off the phone and they said, it's ready for you to pick it up. And I thought to myself, well, I didn't have anything else ordered at Jackson's and it couldn't be that piece of steel, surely. So I thought, well, I better go and have a look. So I just got back straight in the car and went up there and sure enough, uh, is exactly what we wanted was there for me to pick, well, I use the word <laughs> loosely, pick up because I could hardly stagger with it up because it was so heavy. Uh, and he said, well, um, well, we went out the back and looked in the, uh, in, the, in the rack and here was this piece of steel exactly the right size. We didn't have to cut it or anything, so we thought it must be yours. <laughs> Digging at Warrity began in preparation for laying the concrete foundation. We, we had our ups and downs uh, after we'd dug holes, got everything prepared, ready to pour cement the next day, we'd go up there and all the sides had slumped in. So you know, you're back to square one. The construction of the tower was cheap. We found a, um, Hart found a refrigerated container, a stainless steel refrigerated container in Palms North for $3,000. So we got that on the job and the local guys put a coat of paint on it. Then we had to put a lot of concrete in the ground and initially with a small tower we only needed about 15 metres but by the time we got the big tower organised and the pad got bigger because the foot spaces were wider and all that sort of stuff in the container, we needed something like 25 cubic metres of concrete which was huge and so we got a special price for that, we got a discount price for it and we got a bunch of people to donate at the cost of a, a metre of concrete and then the local uh, councils, the um, local boards, the Pater on Track, Danny Verk um, Board and Woodville Vision and Ekatuna Board, they donated enough to cover the rest of the concrete. So we got all the concrete done, uh, the steel was donated, the reinforcing steel was donated by somebody and then we had to go through the hassle of um, organising the footings and getting that such that we could get the footings of the concrete before we put the rest of the tower up. And that was a huge exercise, the Lions came and helped, there was a whole bunch of people came and um, put labour in on the job. And, did all those bits and pieces. So after a while, there was a huge, huge workforce out there that did that for us. It was really good. And we can't thank them enough for that. It was absolutely amazing. The team were forced to develop their own unique pylon construction techniques. Fortunately, the big day featured remarkably favourable conditions. We got the guy up again with this crane. He had two cranes this time because he lift one end up so it didn't damage it. And then tip it up vertical and then he hoisted it right up. And uh, we just lowered it quietly into the the, um, the join, joining point and the bolts all fitted, every bolt just fitted, no trouble at all, it was absolutely awesome. So with the same crane we hoisted the antenna up 
and bolted that on the same day. And then after that, we had to put in the wiring and the cables and all that sort of stuff. We were there at 7 a.m. in the morning, and and we uh, we got the tower up, and the, the cranes were driving out of the uh, yard at Warrity by 10 a, 10 a.m. in the morning, and by that time we'd had the got the tower all up and bolted, and it's not a simple thing putting in uh, four legs. I mean, if you get if you're out and anything. Uh, <laughs> Those, those legs won't line up, and those are miracles on their own. But all that morning, it can blow like whatever at Warrity, and there was no wind at all. The, the windmills, which are just below us, um, were not turning all morning on that uh, morning. And the crane driver came to me and he said, Well, Hart, um, I've put up lots of towers for... Uh, government departments and, uh, and um, power boards and the like, uh, but never before by... Uh, <laughs> he could have used the word geriatrics because I'm 75 and Pat's 80 and, and there are others younger, of course. Ian was not as, as old as I am and uh, um, others there. But uh, he said never before has it gone so smoothly so that's encouraging I think. Tararua TV now lives with the many opportunities provided by the extra coverage from the Warrity transmitter. My son uh, over in Scotts Ferry out of Bulls um, he, 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 can, he can ring up and say oh that was a good program dad or uh, uh, or I didn't think much of that one <laughs> with the critics but it's nice to uh, well, it, it's really quite amazing that uh, we can get such a, a broader area. And it was only when we really got it going that we realised that, oh, we've got this um, awesome responsibility because we're not now just Tarua TV, we're, we're still Tarua TV, but we now cover down to Otaki and nearly little, little bits of Whanganui and Martin and all the areas in between. It, it, it's, it's just become huge. We've gone from a viewing possibility audience of around about 5,000 people up to 350,000. So um, we suddenly became up on the radar as a significant TV station in New Zealand, which was really not expected. It was something that just came along and now we've got to service the, this new deal, which is uh, it's just awesome. With a committed Tararua TV team, coupled with enthusiastic community support, the future is bright for regional television in the wider Manawatu area.